So with the UK poised to start regulating the media again, how long until the United States follows suit? What lessons can we learn from Murdoch Gate on this side of the Atlantic? Joining me now to talk about this issue is Eric Burns, partner and strategic communications consultant at Bullfight Strategies and former president of Media Matters for America. Eric, welcome. Thank you. Great to How have you, you with us. Thanks for uh, in recent weeks, Fox has launched an all-out assault on, on the organization you were the CEO of, sure. Media Matters for the president of, encouraging viewers to petition the IRS and, and to pull the uh, Media Matters tax exempt mm -hmm. status. Is this a sign of desperation? Yes. Or, okay, tell me about it. Well, I mean, look, you know, the folks at Media Matters are obviously very, very careful. When I, I spent five years at Media Matters, three years as president, uh, we know exactly, you know, what the rules are, what the lines are, and there's no question that, that you know, fact-checking uh, the lies that come out of Fox News or that come out of MSNBC or that come out of the New York Times, which Media Matters has done quite a bit of, right. uh, is educational and it's C3 permissible. Uh, and it's something that we obviously spend a lot of time, uh, you know, being concerned about and take very seriously. So, of course, it's absolutely a scare tactic. Is Fox at risk of losing their legitimacy and the, in the, what legitimacy they have with their viewers in the United States as a consequence of what's going on in the UK, or is has that fight? Is that you know they're working hard to hold that firewall? Do you think it'll? Hold? They are. No, they are. I look and I think we you know we and others made made a, made a lot of difference in in really educating and informing uh, you know other journalists, mainstream media folks about the fact that Fox is not a news organization. They're political. They're a political operation. They've been acting as such for the past two years. Now, uh, what does it take to get to their viewership that, that really they're watching every day? Well, now we're seeing News Corp emerge as a major criminal enterprise uh, you know, that is engaged in uh, bribing police officers, wiretapping you know, thousands and thousands of, of stars and politicians. And, and apparently uh, possibly in the United even, States as well. Possibly even here in the United States. We think that, uh, you know, I think it's The Guardian is, is reporting that it's not just possibly isolated to the news of the world paper in the UK, but also to the Sun, which is the largest daily in London. And yet, Sean Hannity has yet to discuss this on Fox News. Well, and, and, and Bill O'Reilly is defending them. Last night, uh, the first time that he brought yes. the topic up. And, and of course, you know, James can say he had no knowledge, and, and uh, Rupert can say he had no knowledge, James, but, you James know. Murdoch. Yeah. Yes. To, to what extent is this, um, is the, the Murdoch media empire structured as a kingdom rather than a corporation? I mean, we're talking about, you know, hereditary, uh, whatever the word is. I've no, it, well, it's, all, it, I mean, it's almost feudal in nature. You, yeah. you, you have all these different division heads that report directly to, to Rupert Murdoch. And, you know, I, I've heard many, many times that folks that are running a major publication of his, they're, they're hearing from him once a week. And he right. has, you know, really absolute control. Uh, you know, obviously there's a board, but they're his board. Yeah. Uh, and so he has an enormous amount of control. He built, he built that empire himself. Uh, and in fact, you know, over the last year and a half in the press, we've seen a lot of fighting between his kids about who's going to take over. But it's not, will Roger Ailes get the big job? Uh, you know, will it go to someone else? It's which of, Rupert's, which of Rupert Murdoch's kids are going to take over the empire. So it very much is a kingdom. That's interesting. Do you think it's, any, it's possible at all that the news of the world was hacking? We know that they were, they were yeah. hacking things about the same time that East Anglia University's uh, scientists got their emails hacked and some and, of the... And long before. Yeah, and some of their disparaging remarks uh, about colleagues and just kind of backbiting normal stuff, human stuff. Yeah. Okay. And, and then Fox turned this, I mean, they just trumpeted this constantly on Fox oh, News. Oh, absolutely. You know, climate gate. Right? Oh, I mean, they, they tried to destroy the entire, you know, the, the entire climate change uh, movement. Right, and every, every significant investigation of these scientists has, has come up clean. I mean, you know, absolutely. They, they, they've been vindicated, but you wouldn't know that if you watched Fox News. Course, yeah. Is it possible that it was the Murdoch Empire that hacked them? Because Scotland Yard was supposed to find the hackers, and they never did. And now mm -hmm. we know Scotland Yard was being bribed or blackmailed or whatever by the, by the Murdoch Empire, and you know not to look into them. Yeah. And and you know and News of the World was breaking this story too. I mean, I mean, look, you know. It, I, I don't have the evidence here to, to say def definitively that's the case. I think it's why we need investigations here in the United States. It's, it's, in, the, it's in the interest of every American. Yeah. You know, whether you're conservative, whether you're, whether you're a Democrat, a liberal, you want to be able to trust that the news that you're getting is actually accurate, that, uh, that people aren't engaging in criminal activity to deliver it to you. Uh, you know, and we've already seen Fox, just Fox, I mean, for, you know, set News Corp aside, we know what's going on with kind of this, you know, increasing pressure and in, in, in this 
this you know picture of this this large criminal enterprise and coordinated criminal enterprise. I, I have a hard time believing it didn't trickle over to Fox, which is really kind of the crown jewel of the entire empire. Uh, but if you even just look at the way Fox has handled itself in the last year, so aggressively courting candidates, uh, you're creating folks like Mark Rubio out of out of whole cloth and getting them elected to the U.S. Senate, uh, all of the fundraisers that they were doing for Republicans and their folks were doing, this is very, very similar activity to the very cozy and close relationship that David Cameron was talking about in just a clip right. yeah. earlier yeah. in the segment okay. that Fox in, in our, in, our in our last minute here, yeah. I'd like you to put on your, now you're a political consultant hat. Um, what are your thoughts on the Gang of Six and this, this uh, grand deal that Obama seems to be going for? Look, I, th I think the president's in a tough place. I mean, this is a really, really, really serious issue. And I, you know, I, I spent a couple years as an investment banker, so I understand um, how, you know, truly how serious this is. His face looks pained, you know, because it sort of reminds me of the Cuban Missile Crisis, but it's like a self-inflicted wound. Uh, you know, and so I'm, I'm very, very concerned that uh, we have a bunch of folks in Congress, you know, that aren't really serious, don't understand what they're dealing with, don't understand the ramifications. Uh, and, and we've got to get a debt ceiling increase uh, immediately. It's, it's the equivalent of basically charging up your credit cards and then saying, you know what, I'm not going to pay the bill. And yeah. every American knows that will ruin your credit. They bought the car, they drove it off the lot, and now and they don't want to pay for we it. We can't afford that after 2008. Agreed. Eric, thanks for Tom, being here tonight. Thank you. Great to see you.